Now we're going to talk about the concept of center of mass uh, and how do we find the center of mass of a system? Well, basically, it is the average position of the system's mass. So for a system of particles, we find the average position of the uh, total mass of the system. Now, uh, when we apply a force to a system, there are important consequences uh, depending uh, on whether or not the force is applied uh, on the center of mass or off the center of mass. If the force is applied on the center, on the center of mass, it causes translational motion. If the force is applied off the center of mass, uh, the center of mass is a natural pivot point. It will also cause uh, rotational motion. So um, the rotation effect I, uh, provided that the object is free to move, it's not pivoted anywhere, uh, depends on whether or not the force is applied on the center of mass or off the center of mass. Uh, okay, so how do we find the center of mass? If we look at two particles on the x-axis, so let's uh, put two particles here. One particle has mass m1 located at position x1. One particle has mass m2 and uh, positioned at x2. And we want to know the location of the center of mass. The center of mass x coordinate is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2. So x1 and x2 are the distances from the origin to uh, the positions of these particles. So we have some special situation, for example, if x1 is 0, the first particle is at the origin, and x2 is d, and m2 is equal to 2m1, so the heavier particle is at a distance d from the origin. If we calculate the center of mass location, it is uh, m1 x1, 0 m1, so it's going to be 0, plus m2 x2, m2 is 2 m1, so it is 2 m1 times d divided by the total mass m1 plus m2, which is 3 m1, 2 d over 3. So we find that the center of mass, the average position of the system mass, is closer to the heavier particle. Now another special case, if m1 is equal to m2, these two particles have the same mass, then x1 is equal to 0, m1, is, uh, m1 times 0 is 0, plus m1 times uh, d, or m2 times d, but m2 equals m1, so m1 times d, divided by total mass, m1 plus m2 is 2 m1, it is d over 2. So if the particles have the same mass, the center of mass is right in the middle. <coughs> so we have a symmetric mass distribution uh, around the center of mass, so it's right in the middle. Now, if we generalize this to many particles in three dimensions, the x-coordinate of the center of mass will be m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3 uh, all the way up to the nth particle mnxn divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 all the way up to mn, which is the total mass of the system. So this is sum over i mixi mass of the ith particle uh, x coordinate of the position of the ith particle divided by uh, the sum over the mass of the ith particle, sum over i. So we obtain the total mass, capital M, sum over i m i. So it is 1 over total mass, sum over i m i x i. So for the ith particle, we calculate the product of its mass and x coordinate of its position. So similarly, we can find the y-coordinate of the center of mass by uh, 1 over total mass, sum over i, mass of the ith particle, multiplied with y-coordinate of the position of the ith particle. z center of mass is 1 over the total mass, sum over i, mass of the ith particle, multiplied with z-coordinate of the position of the ith particle. So uh, knowing the x-coordinate of the center of mass, 
y coordinate and z coordinate we know the position vector of the center of mass it is x center of mass i hat plus y center of mass j hat plus z center of mass k hat so it will be 1 over total mass sum over i m i x i i hat plus 1 over total mass sum over i m i y i j hat plus 1 over m sum over i m i z i k hat so this uh, sum over i m i x i i hat so x i i hat y i j hat z i k hat adds up to the position vector of the i particle uh, r i vector so we find that the center of mass position vector r center of mass is 1 over total mass sum over i m i multiplied with the position vector of the i particle r i so this will be the situation when we have uh, discrete uh, particles, for example, making up a system or discrete objects. We have to consider each object separately. But if you have an extended object, uh, a continuous mass distribution like this, uh, what we do is basically we divide the object into differential mass elements. So each mass element has a mass dm and it is located uh, at uh, so let's say this has mass delta m i located at position r i so we want to know the position vector r uh, of center of mass r center of mass so again x center of mass x uh, component is 1 over m sum over i x i delta m i so uh, provided that we're considering this extended mass distribution, extended object, as being composed of small mass elements, each with mass delta m i. In the limit, delta m i goes to zero. So in this limit, we're looking at differential mass elements. We have one over m sum over i x i delta m i turning into an integral, one over m integral over the a whole volume of the object x dm so x center of mass for an extended object uh, the summation turns into an integration 1 over total mass integral x dm y center of mass is 1 over total mass integral y dm z center of mass is 1 over total mass integral z dm or we can say the center of mass position vector is 1 over total mass integral of position vector multiplied with dm. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about this continuous mass distribution by giving some examples uh, in the next uh, video. Uh, for, for the moment, let's consider that we have a gravitational field so that the differential mass element dm also feels a gravitational force. The net force, total mass times gravitational acceleration, acts on a special point called the center of gravity. Now, center of gravity is equal to the center of mass for uh, the condition that we have a uniform gravitational acceleration. So you can see that here, the position vector of the center of gravity is sum over i m i g i r i. So mass of the i uh, particle, the gravitational field acting on the i particle times the position vector of the i particle divided by sum over i mass of the i particle, gravitational acceleration acting on the i particle. So if this uh, gravitational acceleration is uniform over the distribution of the mass uh, uh, the particles if it's all equal to g then you can see that g i's will become g and they will cancel and we will be recovering the position of the center of mass so center of gravity position vector is equal to the center of mass position vector only if the gravitational uh, field is uniform uh, throughout the volume of the object so if you generalize this <coughs> For a continuous mass distribution, you would consider the integral g of r position vector r dm divided by integral dm g of r. So, provided that the gravitational acceleration depends on the location in the object. Okay, so uh, let's consider a simple example. 
A system consists of three particles located as shown in the figure. So M1, uh, M2 and M3. And you can see that M1 is at position x equals 1, M2 is at position x equals 2, M3 is at position y equals 2. You want to determine the center of mass. The masses of the particles are M1 and M2 1 kilogram, M3 2 kilograms. So what I need to know to calculate the average position of the mass of the system is to find the coordinates of the, these particles. X1 is 1 meters x2 is 2 meters, x3 is 0 meters, so there is no x uh, coordinate of the position for m3. So x coordinate of the center of mass is m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3 divided by total mass m. The total mass is uh, 4 kilograms, 2 plus 1 plus 1, 4. M1x1 is 1 times 1, M2x2 is 1 times 2, M3x3 is 2 times 0, so it's going to be 1 plus 2, 3 over 4 meters. So the x coordinate of the center of mass position vector is 3 over 4. Now we have to calculate the y coordinate. M1 and M2 do not have any uh, y coordinates for their position vectors so y1 and y2 are 0 but y3 is 2 so m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 divided by total mass 1 times 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 2 times 2 divided by 4 y center of mass is 1 meters so the uh, center of mass of the system has a position vector x center of mass i hat plus y center of mass j hat which is 3 over 4 i hat plus j hat in meters so this would be uh, ar around this position okay so to summarize we have introduced the idea of center of mass that's the average position of the system's mass we have seen that whether or not a force is applied on the center of mass or off the center of mass we get a different response for the object uh, of course this is true if the object is free to move uh, the center of mass uh, if the force is applied on the center of mass it causes translation of the center of mass we have a rotational effect as well and for two particles on the x-axis, uh, we have shown the center of mass location. And for many particles in 3D, we have shown the center of mass location. In general, we see we have to multiply the mass of the ith particle with the position vector of the ith particle. Uh, and add, add over all particles, divide by the total mass to get the center of mass. Uh, position vector and for an extended object these summations turn into integrations uh, where we have for each component uh, x center of mass is integral proportional to integral x dm y center of mass integral y dm z center of mass proportional to integral z dm each of these integrals will be divided by the total mass of the system to find x y and z coordinates of the position vector of the center of mass and we have seen that center of gravity and center of mass are two different concepts. Center of gravity is equal to the center of mass if we have a uniform gravitational uh, field distribution over the volume of the object. Uh, the center of gravity is by definition the average position where we see the uh, gravitational force being applied on the object mg. Uh, okay. And we have gone through a simple example for a system of three particles and calculated the center of mass location.